Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Chingo Chats. Not political. Not political. Yeah, we're off social media. We're trying to have peace and calm. If you're trying to have some peace and calm, a good system for that is get the fuck off social media. <laughs> Big tech ain't about shit anyway. We're shadow banned, ladies and gentlemen. That's why, please sign up to our newsletter. Go to chingobling.com. That way we can all stay in touch, stay in the loop. We'll promise, we promise to make it worth your while you clicking it and checking out what we got um yeah we're shadow banned so patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales if you want to you know show love and support the show keep us going know where we're at shout out to everybody that sends me a message and says hey man what's up with the what did he said page and i'm like yeah dude we've been shadow banned for months because you can't tag it oh e- even with mine they're like dude i have to literally type out your entire name yeah. just to see if you posted anything new yeah, well, these people can still tag you and shit. The What Did He Said page is like, this account cannot be tagged. Yeah, man, they get me uh, across the board. Facebook as well. They're like, you cannot make money with us. You, you are, do not have monetization. And then TikTok, I'm always in TikTok jail. So uh, in the meantime, they're doing me a favor because I'm only on social media really because like part, part of it is like, okay, well, it's fun. Two is, well, you're an artist, so when you have time and you make, you create some cool shit, that's where you put it so we can see it. Uh, and then three is the business side, which is like tours. I will be in Addison, Texas, October 7th through the 10th at the Addison Improv. Um, and, and that's the beauty of this podcast, too, bro, because it's just another way to like be independent outside of the little matrix, which is big tech oligarchs Mm -hmm. working with a certain political party or a certain political agenda in exchange in other words we'll hide certain stories that are bad for your party or your candidate and in exchange you won't break us up as a monopoly but hey i know i remember i'm old enough to remember when google said don't be evil that was like their whole thing and they have literally changed that they They took it out yeah they took it out they took it out i forgot what they replaced it with or how they rephrased it but it's definitely not that anymore and we'll talk about that on the other show for Um, sure but yeah, man, I'm on tour, Freedom of Speech tour. Uh, tighten up the last details on the on the on a tour shirt and a whole Freedom collection. Um, found some really dope designers, some young cats. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, Shell Shock CBD, man, get you some CBD in your life. This is actually some CBD uh, in my tea. Is it? I was yeah. wondering what I was like. It smells like spearmint gum. Like it's it smells a, like, like it smells like weed a little bit. Got a little weed smell to it. Shellshockcbd.com. When you check out, ten percent off. All you got to do is enter the promo code Chingo. So yeah, brother. Uh, last night, Marisol was watching uh, the Amanda Knox thing. Oh, on Netflix. Were you, so uh, we didn't talk about this, but she was on Rogan. Are you familiar with that story? Yeah, a little bit. Okay, I was not at all. And oh then, shit. Okay, this was like how many years ago? You just ten think, years, I think. And you didn't catch it? I just. I, I knew her name, right? I knew her name because I remember seeing pictures of her and she was, uh, from what I remember, more attractive then than she was now. I think they used to call her like Foxy Noxy or something like that. Yeah, right now she looked like she eat a lot of granola and she wears Teva sandals, <laughs> Birkenstocks. Smells like patchouli. She likes um, fish and cabbage tacos. And could probably go weeks or months without shaving. Yeah, and, and sometimes she shaves when she's on a hike. Yes. Because she liked to hike. That's, the, that's what her face and... Uh, Mm-hmm. For lack of makeup. But then again, she did hard time, bro. They put her, what, in jail four years or some shit? I think it was eight years total. I mean, it might have been four. It was four or eight. Wow. But uh, It was a multiple of four. It was crazy, dude, because did you, did you know we mentioned the movie a couple months ago of uh, Stillwater, the one with Mark Wahlberg? Yeah. It's based off of that story. Except they changed some things, They right? changed some things and didn't consult with her at all about the whole plot of the movie, which I thought was crazy as well. Did they keep it Italy? Or did they yes, just... Yes, yes, yes. I thought it was Paris. Oh, it might have been Paris. Yeah, you're right. It was somewhere not in the United States because you and I were talking about how it was a country bumpkin thrown into like international waters. Fish out of water yes, story. Yes, yes. Yeah. So now I kind of want to want to watch it even more to see exactly what they changed. Speaking of Hollywood, um, you had um, John Leguizamo. I really, I, l- I like his work. Um, I'm a fan of a lot of his stuff. I think he's very talented, the way his mind works. And this is, uh, I'm going to keep it as non-political as possible so it's not an RPT topic. John Leguizamo. These shows bleed in together anyway. Yeah, John Le- Well, it's because it's culture, right? It's it headlines. Is. It's not my fault John Leguizamo blamed the shit on racism. Because <laughs> yeah, we could do a whole show, right? Considering can- it's cultural on Mario. Nintendo, Mario, and your boy Johnny Legs. Luigi. Yeah. Which yeah. I had totally forgot he played Luigi. Yeah, he said, oh, I see they went all white. Literally, that was I verbatim. Mean, I can't believe the production went all white. 
first of all, I mean, again, not to get not to get all worked up, but it's like they re they re uh, they refurbish they revamp movies all the time to make the characters black, female, lesbian. You know, they they switch it up. Oh, Spider Man gonna be Dominican now. Yeah, there's another he show from Heights now. coming out from the 70s. That they're, it's all black cast. I don't know if it's all in the family or Hamilton or something. But A couple of them. My, my point is, I get it. I think he's trying to spin it in a way where it's like, Hollywood been white. The Emmy or the, the Oscars are white. So white like the Oscars. And, you know, we need representation. Representation matters. Okay, hold on. Back the fuck up. How do you get more brown faces on the screen? Well... Let's not just fucking blame it on racism out the gate, Leguizamo. How many Latinos even have an agent? How many Latinos even go to acting class? How many Latinos are even trying to audition for shit? Number two, how many people are writing, I guess, characters where like they got to be Latino and they're not a maid and they're not like a, the, 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 what is it, the Latin bombshell, mm-hmm. like Sofia Vergara? Oof. Ay, ay, ay. Dude, I was in the elevator with her one time. Really? Yes, because my boy Rick Najera, or Najera, however you want to say it, um, I think he works at CBS right now, but back in the day, I believe he was like a co-writer for a National Lampoon movie. These are like really independent kind of B-movie. Uh, I think Simon Rex was in it, dude, that used to be on MTV. Um, so I think Sofia Vergara. This is very interesting, actually, so it's worth the fucking dig- I dig- I'm, I'm all I in. digress, eh? Check it out, homie. So, boom. National Lampoons, right? Now, my boy Rick, he was involved in a couple of those movies. So, some of these stories get blended. Uh, Because I know one of the times, one of these movies, I believe, was getting shot in Miami. And I happened to, like, be on set. I think he threw me in as an extra in some of these, right? Like, hey, dude, come through. I met DJ Clue. I don't know if you ever heard of DJ Clue. But in the hip-hop world, DJ Clue is like... Now he's on the radio. On a, uh, he's a competitor with uh, Breakfast Club Station, mm. with uh, whatever that station is. But anyway, Revolt. DJ Clue was like a big inspiration of mine when I was like in college, because he he was like the face of the New York underground mixtape game, which was he was selling a shit ton of copies on the street, like on some fucking like just out the trunk kind of thing. Basically, like, yeah, mom and pop record stores, uh, some of, like, the African bootleggers would pay a fee to just, like, almost, like, license it. Like, I'm going to give you 200 bucks, Rob, but I can make as many copies as I want now. Leave me alone. Don't come harass me as I'm selling copies, shitty copies, like, zero. So, like, wholesale? In a way, it's, yeah. it's kind of like I'm selling you a master, mm. right? You have permission. Long story short, I met DJ Clue on set, one of these things, and... uh People used to get in trouble sometimes with his music shit, especially at his level. It was like, it was almost like dope dealer level of like little fucking mixtape cartel. So when I went up to him at the craft service, I was like, hey, what's up, Clue? I was like, hey, um, I want to see if I can get some info on some wholesale for your tapes. I'm based out of Texas. And, and I was like, I know Mike Jones. I see you did a track with him. But he's like, oh, Mike Jones. But the whole time he's kind of like fucking with the m&ms and the trail mix but give me like the little side eye of like bitch i don't know you from shit Mm -hmm. and you trying to catch me right now on tape like hey bro i want some wholesale mixtape distribution yeah because they tried to categorize it as piracy even though he was really like putting out up-and-coming artists like yo freestyles and shit like that anyway he's like okay hit this number it was his mom so my sister would order wholesale mixtapes from dj clue organization company through the mom what so now we have it so they'd ship it to us and we'd have it on our shelves so we'd carry like lucky cole stunna me like a bunch of eddie deville a bunch of um of us from our crew we would distribute or whatever but anyway i met sofia vergara yes on the elevator sorry dude sorry dude (laughs) i had my weed this morning so no i like it actually yeah so so i also met um ¿Cómo se llama ese señor? Uh, Eugenio Derbez, the guy that interviewed Fauci. Oh. Fauci, but is it the emergency really? authorization? Is it good vaccine? Is it not good vaccine? I met him also through Rick. And and here's, here's the fucking nugget. Here's the hidden lead of the whole story. This was a point in time where these people were big in their respective countries and they were crossing over into America. Mm. So Rick had literally told me, he was like, bro, um... 
man, he's like, man, I knew, uh, what's her name? Salma Hayek. Mm. When she was just a fucking Mexican soap opera actress trying to make it in the U.S. He's like, he's like, I'm never wrong about talent. I know these stars. Like, he was, like, hyping me up. Like, you know, dude, you one of these people. I done met people before. And um, he's actually the one that introduced me to Cat Williams. Had a whole four-hour meeting with Cat Williams and shit. Wow. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I was in the elevator, Sofia Vergara, because she was a big Colombian model, and she was trying to... This is before she made it on Modern Family. So she probably literally was like about to audition for Modern Family around that time. So she's a Colombian bombshell. She comes to America. She has an accent. And she fucking, by, by luck, hard work, the grace of God finessed it to where it's like hey i know i'm i'm just big in my country but let me know how i could prove myself over here so i can make it in this industry and she got casted along with the kid the kid from texas um the the you know he was like the husky kid mm -hmm. in the modern family well he's a he's a grown-up now and uh he's from brian college station oh i didn't know that his family's from brian, brian college station his dad rest in peace that was his vehicle in the they can't deport us all uh production the truck? Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, that brown lowrider truck. Yeah. And um, so I met his pop. I actually was wearing his dad's chain on one of the scenes because I had forgot my shit. And um, it was going to be a bitch to be like, okay, is anyone going to notice that the way we shot it last time, he was wearing like these other ones? So his dad's like, here, fool, rock it for a little bit and give it back, motherfucker. So if there was ever a chance, what you're saying is that that was the point in time where you're in an, ele in an elevator with Sofia Vergara. She's new to the country. She's trying to make it. She's basically on the same trajectory that you were. Mm -hmm. And you could have been like, hey, what's up, mom? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, it wasn't like that because, for one, she had her big ass Russian bodyguard. I don't know who the <laughs> fuck this dude was. Zengi um, from Street Fighter. I, and again, this is like the younger version of me. So I'm dressed all baggy. You know, I'm looking crazy. Um, Maybe she's into that. And then she was in her prime. I mean, arguably, she's in her prime now because she's like popping on ABC Network or whatever, but she was in her prime prime. I'm sure. Dude, funny, we were actually talking about this last night on the couch, uh, Don and I. We were just having a nice uh, bourbon. Like, it's getting closer to fall, and it's like about the time that we whip out like the bourbons and maybe the bourbon air barrel beers and stuff okay. and have it from time to time. Nice. So Go on. We, we were, she was working on uh, candle stuff on her laptop. I was cutting up RPT clips and working on all of our stuff. And we always kind of keep something in the background, like on the TV. Uh, now because like uh, postseason baseball is really heating up it's always an Astros game like the Astros are basically on every night for weeks right almost uh, and then once the game's over if it's not too late we'll put on just something in the background usually it's like Seinfeld or Friends okay. that's like the go to that we don't have to pay attention to and it's just nice funny shit in yeah, the background yeah 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 sitcoms yeah just they're great class for, yes they're great for that do, do you have a go to sitcom well well the reason my mind jumped at that is because in my Leslie Kahn acting class notes they literally told us when I was taking them classes in L.A., they're like, you have to watch three hours a week of TV late night sitcom, like funny shit like that. Oh, really? Yeah. And that's why I was like, oh, yeah, sitcom. Yes. Because I think those two were literally like probably top of the list. But they wanted you to watch something like um, anything from Modern Family. Uh, it's kind of sitcomish. Um, Frasier. Bazinga. What's that? Bazanga, Bazinga, the little nerds. 70s oh, show yes. type of thing, mm -hmm. Golden Girls, that type of shit. Cool. Well, it, it's just kind of like a go-to. And it, I don't know what it does, but maybe now that you've said that, it just kind of also, as you're doing something creative or like outside of the norm, it like kind of helps like perpetuate that energy into what you're doing. I don't know. It's weird. And it's also kind of a distraction if you're just like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm, I'm kind of stumped here. And you look over and you just like laugh at something and you get back to it. But anyway, yeah. Yeah. we started bringing up like celebrity crushes because Jennifer Aniston, I was saying, was like, she's like this quintessential like beautiful american actress that just like was a hopeful model and actress that makes it you know along with these all, tons of other stories that we know now but don always asks you know questions that are for some people like off limits but it's just like what's who are your celebrity crushes kind of thing and i was like oh you got to go jennifer aniston like if we're talking 90s right and somehow it just kind of bled over into like a little bit more current time but you saying i don't know how sophia even came up but you saying you were in an elevator with her she was. She guessed my first two, which was Amelia Clark, who played uh, Daenerys in um, the, the Dragon Queen in Game of Thrones. I think she's super attractive. And then Jennifer Aniston, and then Sophia was number three. And she's like, "Why you throw a Latina in there?" And I was like, "Hey, man, that's fucking Sophia Vergara." Ah, you know? like, that's funny. <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah. And then Margot Robbie was like the the fourth, you know, Who, runner who's up. That? Uh, Birds of Prey, Wolf of Wall Street. 
She's uh, DiCaprio's wife in Wolf of Wall Street. Did you ever watch that movie? Yes, I did. Yeah. Come yeah. on, Margo. I just, I'm just trying to remember what she looked like. Well, I mean, most of the time she didn't have clothes on, so it's not wow. her. Wow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny that... Oh, speaking of elevators and meeting people, uh, Gucci Man. I didn't really like meet him. I was just like, man, let me not be a fucking groupie and shit. Mm. Like, oh my God, Gucci. That's pretty tough. <laughs> because uh, we, it was the elevator in the Atlantic Records building. So you had Asylum Records was on one level and then right above them. It's almost like Atlantic Records was like, can you give these motherfuckers the basement? Yeah. Because according to them, people like Mike Jones and Lil Boosie are going to be stars. Right? Give them the fucking basement. Mm. And they're going to sign Chingo Bling and this and that. And then they had a system in the contract, the way they were structured, was like, if you did well at the Asylum Records level, kind of like a incubator, indie, hybrid, like you get, you were supposed to get some support depending on who you were. Mm -hmm. But I feel like I got sabotaged in Mm. the radio department. But anyway, um, you had the option or they had the option to upstream you, meaning take your contract and be like, hey, dude, we're going to revamp some shit because now you're going to be on Atlantic. Like you're it's like Farm League. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you're going pro mm-hmm. in essence. Right. You're going to have the Atlantic Records staff, you know, whatever the fucking machine, the budget. Yeah, yeah. Long story short, you're going to get a bigger loan. Yeah, like that's that's, it. that's that going back to and I I know all the fucking mayor story, so it goes back to his story. But he started on Aware Records, which was like a subsidiary of Columbia, and before he even got distribution on Aware, it immediately went to Columbia because they just saw it was going to be such a, a hit and upstream. Yeah, just right to the big machine. That was like two thousand one, and it's, it's all been Columbia ever since. Wow, he's still with Columbia. Yeah, how many albums did he have, man? That was his first one. It was like uh, they gave him the call on his birthday, which is in in October. Like, hey, we're you know we're getting fifty thousand or hundred thousand copies throughout you know Fye and all these different distribution chains. Crazy. Yeah. And yeah. he was like twenty one, twenty two. Yeah, that's awesome. That's great. Um, it's fascinating, man. These uh, record contracts. Like I recall, like earlier when you said um, he was like, what was it? She was in jail for four years, eight years. I was like, multiple of four, like in 12. <laughs> right. Well, check this out, man. And some of these contracts, and this isn't even music. There were some people out of Dallas that were selling these shoes, right? These sneakers. They would call you. I don't want to say the name. But uh, they were giving some artist deals and shit. Like, you're going to do a photo shoot with it and this and that. And I'm like, okay, well, what's in it, what's for, the, cut? What's in it for the blinkster? Right. <laughs> what's in it for the blinkster? The blinkster. Yeah. If you, you had know. a son, that's what we'd call him. Yeah. Wet, wet my hand. Wet my hand a little bit. Wet my beat. My, yeah, my fingers are itching. Shit. What's in it for the blinkster? And uh, so, they, you know, I'm looking at the contract. Dude, bro, they probably couldn't stand me because I kind of glanced over it before I even got to the point where I even showed it to a lawyer or anything like that. And off top, I found the part about the options, which is like, hey, Rob, uh, just hypothetically, this is a two album, four year contract. And you're like, cool. All right. That's not bad. I I only owe you two albums and it's only four years. Right. Bam. And then there's an option for us to renew. Like we have the option. Let's just say we have three options. The four years become 16 or 12 or whatever. Right. In other words. Dude, I thought I was done with y'all. My four years are up. I know, but we decided to use the option. We chose to extend it for you. Yeah. So now, yeah. If you don't, if you don't have a lawyer and you don't know how to read this shit, you sign that paper. Here we are in our seventh, eighth year, and I still have another option. Remember, I had two options. Yeah. So I think I'm gonna do the option again. And you're like, bro, y'all are shelving me. Y'all not letting me release nothing. Y'all not really getting behind me. Um, And I got to be stuck with you. It's like a bad marriage. And you're like, I have to do four more years with you. It's like, yep. And it's like, and you owe us an album. It's like, bitch, you ain't paying me for the last one. It's like, well, I will give you an advance on the new one if you hurry up and turn it. You know what I'm saying? Um, So anyway, the sneaker people. Yeah. (laughs) I I was like, huh. Okay, so this is a 12-year deal. And they're like, "Uh, it's, it's actually four. I was like, but there's two options. And that's when it just turned into like, bitch. How dare you read this fucking piece of paper and understand it? Damn. I mean, it, they weren't rude or nothing, but you could just tell, like, all right, I think we're going to split this check. It's not, we're not covering Chingo's meal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you've, you've told a couple of stories like that in the past, <clears throat> and it's crazy that you had a few, like, more than one situation where you could remember that you read something or knew something to the degree that 
these big machines were like, man, this motherfucker knows what's up. Well, there's some slick shit. Like, for example, um, when I was negotiating with Puffy, I literally had to tape record like one of the calls Mm -hmm. because I'm like, it's getting to the point where we're kind of hashing out some details in terms of like, do I have my people send you a contract? Yes or no. Like you're asking questions and I'm trying to answer them type of thing. So for example, all right, hey Diddy, um, do I get creative control on this project? Um, you know, that's something we're willing to share. <laughs> okay. Share is a really cool word. It's super subjective. Like this dude at this point had to have been a shark because it's also quite vague. Yeah. So he knew what he was doing because he was fucking P. Diddy. He had already been around the block a few times. He paid his dues. He's been in the game. And he dealt with big whales in the music business. You know, he was having to do deals with Clive Davis and all these people, right? So I'm like, share. Hmm. Because at this point, I'm trying to be picky of who I sign with. Like, I didn't want to get blindsided, but like, oh my God, but I love that label. First of all, it was going to be Bad Boy Latino, not Bad Boy. Yeah. Number one. So I didn't want to get sidetracked with like, I really admire this dude. It'd be a really cool experience to work up under him. So he may not even have time. Realistically, you might be able to get his assistant on the phone. Like, I don't know, right? There's a honeymoon era where it's like, yeah, y'all might hit it off. Y'all might kick it like, oh man, come to, come to Miami, man. We're doing this thing. Come to Atlanta, we, you know, hang out. So, so share, share. Okay, yeah, I'm willing to share that. So now I hit up my boy, Charlie Braxton, who we had on the show a while back. And I'm like, hey, dude. Um, I was asking him about creative control because he ain't the only label that's trying to take me out of my independent status and become involved to where now there's this whole other party that I have to trust and depend on and work with. It's a big commitment, right? Mm-hmm. It's like you're literally, it's, it's as if Spotify came and bought uh, uh, this podcast. Okay. And now they have a bunch of rules, right? So you're hesitant. Um, Anyway, so my boy Charlie Braxton was like, yeah, man, it all is based on what actually the contract says, not share over the phone, like this little verbal, yeah, share. He said, this is what share means, Chingo. Charlie Braxton's a beast. That's why I was like, I felt like I was talking to Yoda Mm. at the music game. He said, this is what share means, Chingo. It's going to say 51% creative control goes to bad boy, 49% creative control goes to Chingo Bling Productions or whatever. If there's ever a disagreement on what this album title, cover art, first single, producers, samples, features, music video director, what the poster going to look like, how's the merch going to roll out. If there's ever a disagreement, we're going to go with Bad Boys, say, because it's 51%. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then really I don't have creative control. Just say that. Just tell me no. (laughs) Just tell me no, bro. We need it. because. Is there any way to ever like, not that you would ever hope to get into that situation, but if you were, how would you resolve that? Is it just something that becomes a stalemate or is it always they have creative control and it's what they say goes? Yeah. Yeah. It sometimes can become a stalemate where, where it's a strain, where there's going to have to be compromise. It all depends, right? It depends on everybody's situation. Every label has a different CEO. Every artist is different. Every ma- There's so many different ways it could go, right? But, um... I think the biggest thing of what it is I'm trying to say is like sometimes in life where like you want success, you pray to be to have getting these phone calls from these people, like making noise in the game to where they they trying to work with you. Mm-hmm. The the difficult red pill blue pill situation basically becomes like do you a possibly get screwed, maybe get the shitty end of the stick, but get some experience, learn some wisdom, maybe see how they do things and then maybe it works maybe it don't or b you say sorry dude you're just gonna have to be a footnote in my story my trajectory is gonna have to go in a different direction it's too risky getting involved yes there's a chance it could be cool but at the same time the point i'm at right now is figuring it out for myself like being self-sufficient, self-reliant, independent, going about it a different way so you have more leverage. You have you own your catalog. You know what I'm saying? Like you own your masters, your titles, your albums. Um and that's a hard choice for a youngster in his early 20s. Mm-hmm. It's like uh you know, I might shit cuz we like we actually kicked it with uh P Diddy one time. Yeah. So I probably told the story before, but I'll run through it real quick. Um uh, 
where basically thanks to Pitbull, that's why I was even on Diddy's radar. I believe. I believe that's the only reason he even heard my name. Or even maybe knew more. Because he might have seen me on MTV. But uh but Pitbull um uh, basically bluffed. He didn't have to do that. Pitbull was, I think, locked in his own record deal at the time. Like he was trying to get out of. But um I think the play Pitbull was trying to come up with is like, let me help my homies get on in mm-hmm. different labels because I'm stuck in my shit. And once I'm done with my bid, maybe I could be the coach while I'm in this. Like, he literally felt locked in because it was a fucked up situation. Thankfully, that label folded and then he was free. Nice. And then it was off the rest the is history. Yeah. yeah. The rest is history after that. And, um, fuck was I saying? He was the one that put him oh, on yeah, the radar. Oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. So, so we actually hung out with Diddy a couple times, right? I think the first time I met him, Pitbull was like, hey, dude, uh, I think he's like, I have this show in Atlanta. Diddy's in town. They're shooting a video for um, that group that Jeezy was in. Uh, I forget the name of the fucking group. And um, so we met him on the tour bus. His kids were on the tour bus and shit. And that's when he was, like, staring at my bobblehead. Like, he's just sitting there with the toothpick on in the bedroom of the tour bus. And um, Pitbull's there standing, like pitching him some shit, talking to him. And then I'm just standing here minding my business. It's like a, it's like a poker play, bro. Mm. You're a new artist. How are you going to behave in front of Diddy? And your boy Pitbull, it's like first impression. Uh, you know, Pitbull's on the bus. I think at the time he did a photo shoot for Sean John. I'm the plus one. I'm the dude that ain't even supposed to be in the green room. Like I'm the homie that the the guy the homie brought. Like I hate he was that already feeling. Yeah, he was already cool with Pitt. They yeah. were already had a, a somewhat of a relationship, right? And I'm just standing with my bobblehead, and he's like, finally, he fucking he's anal- he's hearing everything Pitt is saying, but he's looking at me. So yeah. he's kind of like subtly like fucking casino the the poker table, and he's like, that's you. And I was like, yeah. Where'd you get those made? Like China, shipping container. Yup. And he's like, let me see it. And then he's like, he like jiggles the little head and he just see him do like a, <laughs> almost like, oh shit, I see money. I saw dollar signs. <laughs> I saw dollar signs in his eyes. All right. But yeah, so when he came to Houston, he's like, come to the white party, right? Yeah. And, and so we met him at Hotel Derek and um, motherfucker was taking forever to get ready. They're just sitting there watching TV and shit. And um, some of my boys were there. And they just had the TV on, and I'm thinking, like, man, we need to hurry and get to this event. Like, it's getting late, bro. It's your party. What the fuck's going on here? And I think Tom Cruise was on TV or something. And I said to my friend, like, this motherfucker ain't fooling nobody. Or some shit like that. <laughs> and uh, Diddy and his boy were like, the fuck? Like, what the fuck did this motherfucker just say? Does he know about this Hollywood shit? Yeah. Which, which at the time... Um, I know I'm name dropping. Hey, fuck it. Uh, Carlos Mencia had invited me to the taping of his show, and they made a joke about Tom Cruise, like, oh, his lawyers are going to come sue you if you say something bad about him or something, right? And uh, I was in, in backstage of that, and the writer was watching the screen of Carlos out there performing the joke, live audience. And I'm like, I don't, what do you, I don't get it. Like, why? What, what is that joke about? They're like, oh, dude, some Hollywood shit. You don't know? Like, Tom Cruise, he'll fucking sue the shit out of you if you say anything. Da, da, da. Mm. So then when I made that comment in front of Diddy, they were just kind of like, what the fuck? Uh, but anyway, the, here's the punchline. The punchline is, as Diddy's finally getting dressed and we're getting ready to hop in this fucking police convoy, where we're about to be running red lights and making this huge entrance into this event where all the radio people that won't play my shit are looking at me like, look at this little motherfucker hanging with P. Diddy. So, so Diddy's getting ready. He says, tonight we're going to show you how bad boy parties. We're going to show you how bad boy gets down. This ain't no little John party. <laughs> <laughs> because Pitbull told Diddy, if you don't sign him, little John already wants to sign him. He put that bug in his ear. And then he had to call little John and say, hey, little John, if anybody asks, do you want to sign Chingo Bling? Just say yes. Just to go along with the wow, fucking charade, yeah, right? It's hilarious. To me, that is so funny because it's like... Uh, I guess Pitt and I were in our early 20s, and it's like, that's how we were thinking. Like, that was a fucking scheme, and I guess it worked. So it was so hilarious. I'm sitting in Hotel Derek. Diddy's getting ready so we can leave to his party, and then he says that thing about Lil John, And I'm like, what? This ain't no Lil John part. Oh, he be- <laughs> Pitbull talk. Oh, shit. It worked. Yeah. And then it was cool, man, because um, you got to see how the big boys roll. 
And I had my boys with me and shit. And then we go to the event and Diddy's like, hey, man, you want to meet Jeezy? And I was like, fuck yeah. And then I met Jeezy again the second time. I just didn't remember him. Mm -hmm. I had already met him before. And then um, afterwards, we go back to Hotel Derek. And now you're there like in the little lobby area. My boy Lucky was like drunk. Mm -hmm. This is back back in the day. Wow, Lucky. Not doing my push-ups, jogging, reading Proverbs. (laughs) Lucky. And uh, what is it? The What did he call it? The PP? PPP, prayer, proverbs, and push ups. That's fine. And um, oh, so so now we're in this lobby area with P. Diddy and Lucky and I think Eddie DeVille. I can't remember who else was there. And uh, Lucky to, Lucky was like out of it. And he's just like, No, I'm saying, come on, Diddy. Hey, man. Chingo. Diddy, come on, man. We're going to strip club. Bro. You want to go to Onyx? You want to go to Onyx? Chingo, tell him, Hey, come on, Diddy. <laughs> Let's go. We're going to strip club. And I'm like, I'm just kind of there, like, okay. This, and you just see Diddy's face where he's like, kind of like, I don't want to go to the strip club with you motherfuckers. <laughs> like, at the time, he's probably, man, I got some strip club upst- upstairs. Yeah, like, bitch, I'm Diddy. Yeah. I'm in Houston and I'm at the Hotel Derek and the strip club. I ain't got to be in no strip club with y'all. I don't want to sign you that bad. Yeah. So it was one of those like awkward lie, like, um, yeah, fellas. Like, it just, it's like, and this is where we say goodbye. Yeah. It's like momentum shift. Yeah, it definitely. It's like, all right, bro, let's fucking th- good hanging out. Thanks for the invite. And uh see you never. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> see you never. Sayonara. <laughs> Have you ever been in what can you remember a situation where you were like the you know, you were the person of attention at an event or at a gathering or whatever, and then all of a sudden someone else walks in and takes like like all of the fucking thunder. Oh, that's great. I want that. Yeah? Sometimes. Man, you don't want to be at a quinceanera and it's like you the top alpha dog in that bitch. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to be at a wedding or something. It's like, man, this motherfucker. Yeah. This motherfucker ain't here. Probably did burpees in the parking lot, bro. <laughs> or like, man, we done seen your viral moments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> man, we used to jam you back in the day. Whatever. It's like, yes, please. You know, I mean, I'm low key. I don't I don't walk around the quinceanera. But I, I'm shy and not insecure but just shy to the point where like i just want to eat my mole you know what yeah. i'm saying dance a couple cumbias with my daughter or something or my wife and just mind my business but you know it's it's human nature like if you're at an event and like somebody from the astros or somebody of course people can be like oh that's how they eat <laughs> or like oh look you know like oh wow he's getting really drunk the guy from the astros yeah. or like he's a really bad dancer like they're going to look at you like you the motherfucker from the Astros and we're going to hyper analyze. At least that's how I feel. Sure. People hyper analyzing like, damn, he ain't getting no haircut before he came here. Or like, oh, his beard's crooked. Or, oh, he's a lot shorter in person or any little thing. Dude, people are so weird about shit like that, right? Like just like you said, observing or like analyzing people that are public figures or, you know, have some shine on them for whatever reason. It's hard for them and i've seen it in person i've always tried to, and i'm sure you're the same way and my still talks about being the same way of like not being that like groupy type of like let's get a picture all up on in their bubble in their space but for the most part most people cannot control themselves when they see somebody that they like admire mm. have you ever been like that what do you mean that i'm around somebody you i just admire have to like well i mean i i'll ask motherfuckers for pictures and sure shit like yeah, that. yeah um all the fucking time <laughs> i mean one time bro we were at a this really delicious diner in Nashville, right by the whatever university they have, I think University of Tennessee, some shit. And I forget the dude's name, man. It's a black actor. He's been in a ton of shit. He was like even in one of those, um, like Tyler Perry, like Why'd I Get Married? And okay. like you see him on like random cop shows. Like if I show you his face, you'll be like, oh yeah, that's a fucking dude. So him and his family in there having breakfast and I'm like, babe, Man, that look like that dude from all in movies. <laughs> and and then we're like, I don't know, is he? So now you're the person where you're Googling the person like, hey, eso te parece. <laughs> <laughs> so they're paying and they're leaving. And at that, I think at that point, someone else asked for a photo. He was super chill. He yeah. wasn't tripping at all. I think they were looking at colleges for their kids. And um, and it was just like, hey, man, real quick, man, let me hop in a photo real quick. Or like uh, Paul Rodriguez, I, I didn't have no shame. That dude's a fucking legend. I have no shame saying, like, for example... When I worked with him, HBO San Antonio, that's my first time I met him. Throughout the whole production, as we're doing two shows, you know, we're backstage, all this type of shit. Like, I didn't really say a word to him, only because I, I saw he was in his zone. Like, he's, like, studying the script. 
he's back there like meditating like just sitting on the chair quiet to himself i'm like maybe he's hung over i don't know what the fuck i think he had like some health stuff recently as well mm. so i'm like okay he's just leave him alone and then we're at the rap party now he's got his dodgers hat now he's in jeans and shit now he's like your fucking deal yeah like i i honestly i think it'd be dope to see him do stand-up i haven't seen his stand-up recently like i don't know if he goes all pachucoed out like but that's how he was hosting. He's got like the little hat. It's kind of it's kind of zoot suitish. But I had no problem being like, "Yo, man, great working with you, bro." Like I ain't want to bother you earlier, man. Real quick, we got to get a photo. And then after that, he's just going on like, "Man, my nephew told me about you," and that's on cool. the YouTube, and he's just like telling me all about me type shit. And I'm like, "Okay, cool, that's what's up." And he's like, "I gotta go see what snacks they got." And then he, I'm like, "Do I, do I go with you? Can I have a snack with you?" Um, I, Okay, I'm going to walk back to my wife now. <laughs> That's not one of those Diddy moments, right? Like, see you never? Yeah. <laughs> Don't call me again. You asked too many questions about this contract. <laughs> Dude, speaking of, of Hollywood, right? Like, I know we've been talking about music, but well, how do you feel in your mind that Hollywood is going to go? Because when I observe, like, movies and shows that are coming out, you know, the Emmys were on the other day, and I've heard other people, other entertainers talk about this in the same kind of light that there aren't the same type of stars that there were 20 years ago you know you don't have a tom cruise and a dicaprio and a whatever walbert the whole list denzel like there's not that kind of star power in hollywood Mm -hmm. and it doesn't seem like they're curating that it's just a bunch of reboots it's a bunch of like virtue signaling like uh let's just not only reboot but reboot everybody with just a black cast or asian cast or whatever and there's like no new original ideas do you feel the same way about it well according to leguizamo they're going all white (laughs) (laughs) i'm like leguizamo you thought because you promote crt they're gonna hold you a spot exactly right meanwhile they went with the conservative christian chris pratt which is actually pretty surprising yeah. No, because, for example... But it's, it's a business. Who's the biggest star? Exactly. Who's maybe more current, more relevant? I don't know. Star-Lord? Um, Chris Pratt? Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I, don't even, I don't even know what the fuck that is. But. Guardians of the Galaxy? Yeah. God damn it, Chingu. Yeah, I don't, I've never seen that movie. I know there's a raccoon that talks and a tree that talks. Yeah, Bradley Cooper plays a raccoon. And Vin Diesel is the tree. Nice. <laughs> okay, good. See? Star power um well i guess these days you got like kevin hart the rock you still got Wahlberg, i guess but to to discuss like the future of movies and and all that like ah man i don't even know bro it's weird because for example somebody like country wayne arguably has probably just as big an audience or more than some of these so-called stars or even some of these movies (laughs) <laughs> some of these motherfucking skits probably reach more eyeballs across reshares retweets and different platforms than some of these movies yes keep going you're right uh-huh. there's actually this guy you know sometimes sometimes the algorithm will recommend somebody that just starts popping up on your tiktok or on you know what is it the for you page or your reels explore page or whatever and uh, I followed this guy like a month ago just because he, he, he does this character that's like a country dad. And they're all like country characters. But the country dad character is so spot on just because that's what I grew up with and all my, my, def, my friend's dads that I just kept following him. And I, as I was watching him, I'm like, this is, this is Theo Hoover, basically. This is what Theo Hoover would be if it was like a 30 second, 60 second. Like he uploads every fucking day. His name's Country Dad? No, his oh. character's Country Dad, but let me find what his name is. I'm going to find it, and I'm going I'm to play a couple of them for you. But I'm just curious, because you, you have like these digital distributions, like everything's, not everything, but a lot of things are going HBO first, right? Or HBO at the same time. And it's not this big like motion picture, in theaters only, star power kind of shit that's coming out, with the exception of, like, well, I was going to say Marvel, but not even that. <laughs> they screwed over Scarlett Johansson. So I don't know. So you're saying that there's... A plethora of things coming out is that what you're saying there's a plethora of things coming out but it's not like you're not seeing this big machine push a tom cruise movie or a you know matthew mcconaughey movie like you did 15 20 years ago yeah i think i think it's a lot of factors man i feel that all this pandemic stuff and like the politicization of uh trump and the masks and the vaccine and it is and the, i almost feel like they shook the box so much in terms of like retraining people to f- give up freedoms and just be locked down and just not collect a paycheck. 
know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. you can't go to work and because for the greater good of the community. I feel like they shook the box so hard to where you don't even look at stars the same. You don't even look at movies the same. You don't even experience them the same. They don't get released the same. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like they shook up society and your habits and your like like life before the pandemic was that was an option. Hey, yeah. want to go to a movie? What's out? Want to get some popcorn? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Are we sneaking in snacks? Are we going to do dinner in a movie? Remember that? Dinner in a movie? Dinner now, in a movie. Yeah, you don't remember that? It's I like do. that's an evening. That's a fucking date or that's a little get together, that's a hangout. Uh, dinner and then go catch a movie. Check it out. So this guy, one of his newest characters is uh, Southern Neighbor. He's obviously got like Southern Dad and shit. Uh, I think it's already connected. Is to he the board. Southern? Yeah, yeah. His okay. name's uh, his his Instagram is Dane the Great, but he's got like over a million on TikTok. He's only got forty thousand on Instagram. He just started making them for uh, IG Reels, but he's been making them for TikTok for oh, a couple months now, or like I don't know, six months. Buddy, you like? <laughs> hey, buddy, buddy. You, y'all just moved in? I stay two double wides down. I was trying to find out who was in this uh, Honda Civic. They're going up and down this gravel road. I don't know if that's your buddy. They're flinging gravel everywhere. They got the windows down. I, I, they bumping something. Girl, you look good once you back that thing up. You a fine mother. I don't even want to say the cuss words, man. Now, see, I got two little girls there, and they're riding their bikes up and down that road. I don't want them to hear that kind of stuff, man. You know what I mean? You don't know who that is? Okay, yeah, I got the... Fu- I mean, that's just ridiculous, man. Hey, buddy. His shirt is awesome. Dude, he goes all out with the mullet and the hair and shit. Uh, that shirt is amazing. And then he's got like a... There goes my phone. Southern dad. Yellow. Hey, Miss Mabel, what you doing? Don't start that hey, Miss Mabel crap with me. Now, listen, I got a bone to pick. I hadn't seen that one, but, like, that sounds exactly the way my dad and some of my fucking buddies' dads sound like. But, like, Theo Hoover doing those little short 30, se- 30 to 60 second reels on every quintessential Theo at the quinceanera, Theo at the cookout, Theo whatever, right, is super you. Send me that uh, because I think I could do it, like, with the green screen effect. So like what you just said, uh, the Theo at the Quinceanera. So you would get the picture off the internet, right? Make it your background, and now you're Theo at the Quinceanera. Right. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, man. Uh, I mean, you know, it's like Southern Dad with the weed eater and the power washer, all the shit. It's just, it's so dumb, but it's so Come accurate. Come on. Come on, man. Piece of junk. The big fake belly and shit. I was gonna say, yeah. son, you broke my weed eater. That was me. I, I know you did. I did. Come on. Did you really? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I've had this exact same interaction. Come on. Come on, man. Piece of junk. My dad. That reminds me of my dad, but he would have been cussing in Spanish. Chinga sato pinche man. A hundred percent. That was that was my dad. He, he combined like that. He combined Theo Juve and this guy. It was like That's Red funny. Foreman and some fucking mean Mexican dad. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, yeah, you definitely got it. That's and those are the, talk, going back to like content creation days and like how much can you do in a day? Like how many videos and how many whatever? If you did, if you like committed to short stuff like that, you could do a dozen of them. And every day it's like, it, every day it's something else, right? You're in a new scenario, you're in a new situation. Even if you didn't use green screen for all of them, but you did for some it, to just mix it up, I just feel like that'd be a really good, really good task. Yeah. Uh, what the fuck are we talking about? We're talking about Hollywood for some reason, but I just thought I'd bring it up because we talked about music so much. I don't know if you had any kind of vision of Hollywood. Do you have a? a do you want to roll like in in Hollywood as far as like a big screen kind of thing again? Does that call to you like comedy does? Like trying to audition for something or? You're saying, do I have a desire to participate in like a big movie production? <laughs> yeah. Uh yeah, man. Shit. If if um. Yeah, you never know, like, if it's going to be a hit. You never know. Sometimes, depending on the situation, you don't even know if it's going to go to theaters. Uh, but, yeah, I'm not mad at that, especially, I mean, if they make it worth your while. Um, but doing it the old school way, which is like, pick me, pick me, going to auditions and relocating your whole family to one city. No. I'm so glad I do not live in New York or nothing like that. Yeah. I am so happy. Like, hey, man, I pray for y'all, but, like, like, for example, I know this is kind of RPT-ish, but, like, um, 
when a deli or a restaurant says, hey, bro, you got your Vax papers real quick? Can you show your passport? Just so, because that's our rule. Because uh, I've been seeing those clips go around where it's like, oh, you fucking dude, how dare you? Are y'all really down with that? Let me see your papers in. Like the lady that works there. Um, does... Is it a is it a state law to where it's like you have to? Is it New York City? Is it the mayor that said all the businesses? Is it a mandate like that, or is it like if you want, you could ask for, you could be one of those businesses? No, the governor did say that you have to ask, right? And this is RBT ish, and I didn't get super deep into it to actually put it on today's notes, but in the in one of the bills, I don't know if it was a reconciliation bill or whatever it was, they slipped in this provision that the Biden administration could charge businesses anywhere from 70, 70 000, to right? 700,000 per infraction. Basically force you. F- not just force you, but force you into bankruptcy yeah. if, you, if you chose not to. But force you because they're going to put you out of business otherwise. Yeah. So, but in that same... But that would be federal now? Again, like it's not... Fe- well, it would you be. said Biden. Yeah, yeah. As a, as a federal mandate. Yeah. So it would be federal. Yeah. So they could make a business in Texas. Mm-hmm. They could charge you. Like a business in Texas says, Chingo, I'm sorry, I have to ask for your VAX papers because if not, they're going to hit me up to 700000 penalty. Right. And the state has no say? The state can't be like... At this point, hey, no. Man, no? Not if it's like that, no. I mean, you could, t- you could fight it, take it to court, you know? So aren't there some things, though, where, for example, federal mask mandate, federal whatever mandate, aren't there some things where the state governor is kind of like... Hey man, Florida and Texas, we're not doing that. Yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. Okay, but when it comes, so that's to, always a loophole option. Yeah, but then the the federal government, when it comes to employers, start enforcing like OSHA type of regulations and other like big business type of. They're different rules. Like it's just a different rule set. I don't know what they are. It's not like it's a hundred percent yet, but it's it's in in the ninety percent now. Like that, that could be something that goes through a hundred percent. So I'm sure we'll hear more about it. But there's other companies like um, I was trying to find out what it was that they rescinded their I think it was Virginia one of the big health groups rescinded their mandates because they were going to have to fire like 5 or 7000 healthcare workers so they said okay we take it back you don't have to do the mask mandate you don't have to do the sorry the jab mandate and that's kind of what we talk about and I know we're getting we're going to wrap up yeah. and do RPT but yeah. if you just unite you know it sounds kind of like hippy dippy but there's 300 million of us there's 500 of them I don't mean this in like a malicious kind of a way, like uprising revolution kind of shit, but it's just like if everybody, it's that meme, right? Where it's like the master's whipping the crowd uh-huh, uh-huh. and then one person stands up and then they all turn up or stand up and then the, the master fucking well, bows down. The problem is, is you got all these businesses and corporations. It's almost like a corporatocracy where it's like, you know, Hewlett Packard is going to adhere, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Or motherfucking Starbucks is going to, it's like, they can adhere, but the people working don't have to. What is if HP said, "Okay, all five thousand of my employees have to do this," and four thousand of them said, "Fuck you," what's Hewlett Packard gonna do? They're gonna rescind just like this Virginia medical group did. Yeah, they rescinded. Okay, and uh, yeah, that's a good point because I guess the employee still has leverage. Yeah, the employee they still have leverage is. Like that. Yeah, we again. This kind of goes back to that socialist argument, right? That like there is no business without the employee, right? Without the worker. So if you felt like that, and it's ironic that it's coming from the left because the left always touts that that idea. All right, well, now if there's a lot of people that, that disagree with it, like there was a video that Anna Paulina posted earlier of BLM and MAGA supporters marching together against the vax mandates in New York. <laughs> like, what complete upside down crazy it's, world, dude? I know, but, and then I saw another one where it's like, hey, white liberals, what are you going to do? Mm-hmm. Are you going to... Like, for example, you hate the MAGA people that much that you're going to go against the BLM people? Because I thought you were all about defending them. Like, are y'all going to defend them on this too? Yeah, everyone that posted a black square going to go march with the MAGA people? No, nah, because it doesn't give them that virtue signal. It doesn't give them that good feeling of like, I put my black square for the day. Like, I'm good. See, an in, in informer <laughs> Anthony commented on that, on that video too, on Anna's... Uh march video and it's like it's not right versus left and red versus blue it's good versus evil and i hate talking in those kind of terms because it gets very like you know theological like it's all like literally the devil versus god or whatever but in a sense it kind of has come down to that and i totally agree with that sentiment now i probably wouldn't have two years ago but i just you almost can't avoid it at a certain point there's too many things going on like 
uh, Jonathan Copeland posted that like 46% of the military could get dishonorably discharged because they don't want to take that. So it's like you're dismantling our military, the police, the border, workers, the border, ice, bro, come on. Like, um, and I, we, we, we could wrap up because it's, yeah, it's shifts, segwaying, we're shifting, segwaying in yeah. RPT, but like yesterday on Steve Bannon, they were interviewing a family, they call them angel families where you have a family member that died like at the hands of a, a legal immigrant, right? So this Honduran dude, I think, I think ran over this guy or somehow, some way killed the guy. Um, the sister and the family are like trying to make sure that justice is served. They're trying to make sure that this Honduran dude either like gets deported. Um, what is his bond or bail set at? I think it went to like a liberal judge and then he dropped it down. Like it went from like 10, 30,000 to 5,000 or 10,000 or something, right? Where you're just paying like whatever a percentage. And um, and then, and then she was like trying to like begging, like he's a flight risk. He fled the scene when he did it. He's a flight risk. Put a fucking ankle monitor on this dude. Uh, like, trust me, this motherfucker's a bad guy. Well, come to find out, he ended up like changing his name. So now when the sister's trying to hunt down this fucking dude, they're like, yeah, we know he changed his name to this, but. He has privacy rights, so we can't tell you how we know. And it's like, did he kill someone else? It's like, we can't tell you how we know, but he changed his name. And he has privacy rights. And they won't deport him because Biden took away the, the, um, the powers of ICE. So let's just say there's a, a county jail somewhere in Kansas City. And they're like, hey, dude, we got uh, these two Guatemalan dudes that got caught with dope and this and that, right? Um, hey, 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 ICE, you need to come deport them. ICE comes, picks them up, and releases them into the neighborhood, into the community, because that's what they've been instructed to do. So you have a wide open border, and you taking the powers away from ICE, and you bring in Afghans, and you getting bum rushed by caravans. You know what I'm saying? On top of all the other economic stuff and mandates. <laughs> we'll wrap up this chingo chat with this, because I just found this out recently, that there's certain municipalities around the country... Uh, let's just say, I think Sacramento, San Francisco, they might be two of those, right? Where you don't have to be a U.S. citizen to vote in your local elections. <sighs> what? Yeah. Oh, my God. So as long as you're a resident of the community. <sighs> Who so, came up with that? Democrats. Well, look, what are we talking? We're talking, yeah. you know. Mm. So, and apparently there's a ton of them. So I'd be interested. In, I'm going to try to find a list of all these places around the country where you can go vote for whatever kind of local legislation without being a U.S. citizen, which, you know, people on the left will probably say like, well, if they live in the community, why wouldn't you want them to vote? Like that is a U.S. Yeah. citizen. This privilege. is stolen land. This is a <laughs> there's no such thing as an illegal person. Humans aren't illegal. <laughs> it's like, yeah, but this country should have some sovereignty. Too bad. So sad. America disrupted everything. And that's why they're coming here. It's our fault. We deserve all the immigrants and all the people around the world Man, all at once. Somebody sent me a really good IGTV of some New York rappers going at it. And I'm going to have to try to find it, play it on RPT, because one of them was just as red-pilled as it gets. And it was, it was great. It was a great little debate. <laughs> a so, debate or a battle? A uh, little bit of both. Wow, are these like big name rappers? I guess because uh, you know the but the captions could lie. Like the captions I read, like you know, blah blah blah. The king says whatever to whoever. So I gotta try to find it. Yeah, see who the names are. All right, folks, uh, we talked about a lot of random shit. Um, I love it. I, lo I love this Chingo Chats format because it reminds me of like I don't want to say old school podcast, but like when you would. I, I guess they still do it like this, but like if you have Burt Kreischer chopping it up with whoever. <laughs> How funny he's on. I, I opened IG and he's on Rogan today. But yeah, let's say let's say you got Bert Kreischer sitting down with whoever Maniscalco or any Bobby Lee. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, it just go. The conversation goes wherever the fuck it goes. Kind of like Rogan, I guess. This too. is my favorite type of podcasting. This style. Yeah, this style is okay for sure. Not we, having to stick to a topic. Yeah, and even though on RPT we do the same thing, it, it's we, we want to cover the important stuff on there, but those always lead to side tangents also. And maybe we, I mean it's at the end of the show, but maybe we'll do another intro for the beginning of it. We want to try to test out that live caller idea right so it's potential that on tuesday if you're still listening to this which i'm sure you are we're going to try to do a live call-in show and it's going to be for the patrons first so you're going to have a number inside the patreon where you can call in we're going to probably do it around noon on tuesdays which would be your lunch hours so a lot of people will have time to call in 
there's either going to be a theme or we'll have a set, you know, kind of direction of questions. But yeah, it'll be one of those old school, speaking of like an older thought, college radio days, chime in and literally chat with Chingo. See how that goes. Yeah. I don't think we really patched in live callers into my college radio days, but it's okay. I'm going to let you keep saying that. <laughs> um, yeah, it was fun, man. I, I definitely want to... I don't know, maybe this episode, but definitely want to get more clips out from Chingo Chats out to the world just so people don't be like, all this motherfucker do is talk about politics. Yeah. But hey, we had fun. Spread the word if you enjoy it. We thank you so much for tuning in. Peace and calm. Y'all be safe. Peace. <laughs>